you have to remember these like girls who have like this type of history if you grew up homeless you've never seen you've your 20k a year was impressive to you this woman this is the type of woman that when i meet in person i just want to like this is the problem with girl club you're in until you're not in and once you're not in girl club you're out i hate this i hate everyone every time i watch the whatever podcast i'm like i hate everyone Do you like the show? Do you want more armpits? Well, be sure to follow me on YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, TikTok. Be in my wallets for all I care. I'm curious about this. So, and we've had a lot of uh, girls who do OnlyFans come and be on the show. Um, people who do sex work. Uh, curious, like earnings wise, I know a lot of you can make a lot of money. Um, you used to do it. Six uh, years. You used to do escorting too. Um, you, you did o the red shirt versus lab. OF for six years uh -oh. or you did sex work for a total of six years? Six years, but I did OF. Well, it was Patreon before OnlyFans. Yeah, it was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I've been online for about five years. Sure. Can you talk a little bit about the uh, revenue earnings you were making? So I was 18 when I first started, baby. Um, and there's obviously a market for that because men are depraved. Uh, my first month, I made $27,000. Wait, why, why, what do you mean men are depraved? Men, I'm, men are depraved, obviously. Like, what do you mean? As in they <laughs> men are the buyers of, like, yeah, men are the buyers of pornography, oh, of sure, prostitution. Yeah. Okay, so you, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so my first month, I made $27,000. Wow. Um, and then I made a study stream of... Uh, over 20,000 for about three years and then it's- per, per month? Yeah. So you averaged about 20,000 per month? Yeah. Okay. Um, which is not usual. I wanna say that any woman watching this, yeah. that is that is the top 1% of OnlyFans and OnlyFans, uh, the top 1% makes about 44% of the website's revenue. I was saying now most it's actually women. point like nine because mm -hmm. even top one, I was top one and I was not making 20K yeah. a month. One, most, one quick question. You most said, women make about $100 a month. You said your first month you made 27K but obviously OnlyFans wasn't around then. So yeah. when you turned 18, did you immediately go into Patreon? Yes. Like kind of what, what was the uh, timeline? Because you said you did escorting too. So did you jump right into escorting or was that later So on? I was a homeless teen, um, but I, I mean, there are lots of reasons why a teenage girl starts sex work, but I think one of the reasons I was working at Hooters, actually, um, and people were, people were paying for my panties. Uh, oh, yeah. So then I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to go on seeking arrangements. Before then, I was, um, this was right before I turned, I don't know how illegal, <laughs> I don't want to you say anything illegal. You selling but, methamphetamine? You no. Know, okay. okay. I was never, no, I was never selling drugs. Sorry. I'm, I'm a shaker. I'm a shaker. I'm a mover and a shaker. Um, Wait, so what were you sorry. doing? Bro, she's a minor doing prostitution. What do you not understand about what's illegal here? <laughs> this is what I mean. He just doesn't he just doesn't keep up with comedy. There's so many clips where I listen and I'm like, I don't think he understands what this woman's saying at all. Like he's just like, so uh when you're saying illegal, like what do you mean illegal? Well, prostitution in many states is illegal and being a prostitute as a minor is very illegal. I think in probably all states. So that thing. Uh, I was, I was just on seeking arrangements, but I was using a different name. I'm sorry, Brian Gerber. <laughs> oh. I was finding ways to make money illegally for about six months, and then oh. I turned eighteen. On seeking? Yeah. Escorting? Yeah. <laughs> this boy, my God. <laughs> By seeking arrangements, do you mean like were you doing admin work? What do you think she means? But well, you, you said you found ways to make money illegally. I mean, escorting is. I was well, underage. Age. Yeah. Oh, you were you were under eighteen. Yes. <laughs> bro, bro. Yikes. Yeah. That's a. Because I thought you said you said you started at eighteen. I started at eighteen. She said she was a homeless youth. Oh my god. <laughs> Holy. Uh, you said. What, maybe that was just the online content. That yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that. Yeah, yeah. I moved on to everything was was yeah. Patreon was eighteen. I was of age for Patreon. Okay, but the escorting you were under <laughs> a couple months. Yikes. Okay. <laughs> hey, Lav, when you're describing underage youth work, could you spell it out really clearly at least four times? It's gonna take a couple times. <laughs> that's not. That's 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 yeah. Okay, illegal it's, activities understood. Yeah, okay, it's so tragic. how many different men were you finessing on? <laughs> well, I was actually robbing a lot of men on seeking. You were robbing. Well, I was doing both. It, I was, yeah, I was doing both. I, I mean, listen, I was a homeless. I was a homeless teen. I was living out of my car, out of a motel, on my friends, you know, couches. Uh, but I was hustling. I was doing okay. If you want to meet up, give me four hundred dollars. Then they give me four hundred dollars, and then I go ghost, um, which serves them right. They're trying to buy sex from an eighteen-year-old. Your money's gonna get taken. You should be in jail. So. What's well, still? Wait, wait, so are you like justifying the fraud? <laughs> I'm just trying. To... I think it's completely justified. I think that you should be a felon if you buy sex. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So, well, I mean, you, you admitted as much earlier on during your introduction, you're anti- Sex industry. Sex industry, okay. So, what, quick question, but I want to continue a little bit on this. Um, do you think that, so you think procuring sex work should be criminalized, you know, in terms of- I believe in the but, Nordic model, but so think, it's criminalized for men to buy, but it's not criminalized for women to sell. Well, what if a, a woman wanted to buy? Would that also be criminalized? Women do not buy sex. But yes, it would be criminalized. Well, 
generally speaking, it's there's not a huge market for it, but I'm sure you could acknowledge there are some. There are very, very, very few. few. She literally just said there aren't women, but if it's a woman, yes, it would still be illegal to buy. She already answered that. But the prostitutes or women who are prostituting or escorting, you don't think that they ought to also be? Uh, I think they should be helped. Uh, yeah, well, I was saying uh, it's a very Western idea that women uh, want to do sex work. She's got her dog. Um, most women who are getting into sex work, there's a lot of bustling happening. Most women yeah. who get into sex work are doing it um, because they're being trafficked or because they're very down on their luck sure. or because they're homeless or because they're addicted to drugs. Um, so yeah, I believe that they sh there should be outreach, social outreach programs for prostitutes. Okay. Got What's your it. relationship with your parents? Horrible. I'm basically an orphan. Yeah, that was why I was uh, basically a homeless youth. Yeah, you said you were homeless. Uh, so you were like, was it kicked out of the house at 18 or even before that? So I was actually sent to a residential treatment center at 14. Um, Is that where you got the hat? Yes. <laughs> no. Uh, and then when I got out, uh, I had healed. I'd done all this therapy. I was uh, like uh, in state custody. Um, and then when I got out, my parents were still, you know, my mom was still addicted to drugs. My dad was still an angry drunk. Um, so then I just sort of left. Okay. Uh, at about 16 and then I was kind of transient in and out of their home um, but mostly out of their home I lived with my high school boyfriend and then when we broke up I was on the street um, but I also got into sex work because I had a criminal record so I couldn't get a job, a job. Uh, what was the what was your it had to do with my mom it's it's expunged from my record it was domestic yeah, assault though but it wasn't it, I didn't yeah. I didn't do it but you, okay and then you also said just I want to touch back on this really quick uh, you were when you said you were robbing men yeah so what, part of that was you were just um, you were asking for money for meetups, they would send it, and then you just wouldn't meet up, but yeah. would you also, if you did meet up with a guy, no, I would, would, not. would you rob them in person? No, for no, 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 that's okay. dangerous, no. Okay, okay, so never any in-person robbing. No. But this was more of a finesse, like, I'll meet you, I'll meet you. Yeah, I was hustling a hustling. little bit, yeah. Okay, have you seen the movie Casino? No. Oh, okay. Good movie, Robert De Niro, just... I don't know, I uh, I've heard of it. Good movie, anyways, it's kind it. of unrelated then. <laughs> okay, so, uh, wow, you've had a uh, quite the path in your life. Um, so, I forgot what, oh, yeah, how much money do you guys make on <laughs> OnlyFans? <laughs> And did any of you ever commit any crimes against men? Just saying, just curious. Any robbery? <laughs> Let's start with the first question. How much do you make on OnlyFans? Or like your total content creation, how much do you make? Um, I, range, you can give a range if you want. I do well, I don't know. Okay. I do well. I'm six figures a month? Too much to count. Um, under that. Hold up, well. have you ever had a six figure month? a year, and she kept nothing inverted question mark. Uh, that's super common, uh, super common. So like, we have to remember that like, there's kind of, there's a bunch of spaces in sex work, right? And they don't all look and act the same, right? There's like, there's like the mature women who like, all they do is really sex work and they do it like, uh, they do OnlyFans and a couple of like online stuff for like three hours a day max. They make pretty good money and then they like go on and they just like do sex work to pay for the rest of their life basically. And they, that's about all that they do. But then there's people who have labs history who also very often end up in sex work through similar things. In fact, she's pretty lucky that she got to the online space. A lot of these girls end up doing like pornography and stuff as well. And it's super common for them to blow all their money because they're 18 year old dumb f**ks with no parents, high levels of trauma, high levels of mental illness. And to them at this point, infinite cash, right? You have to remember these like girls who have like this type of history. If you grew up homeless, you've never seen you've your 20k a year was impressive to you. It was it, you're 18. Remember, you don't learn about taxes in high school. You barely attended school anyways. You don't understand what this means. You just see thousands of dollars every day. You, it's infinite. And so they just blow their money on drugs, on partying, on beauty stuff. Beauty stuff is super expensive. They get fake tits, they get Botox, they get a whole bunch of plastic surgery, which like, if you get upper end like boobs, it can cost you between like 10 to 15. That's really, really expensive breast surgery. But then think on top, what if you get chin, chin implants or you get Botox in your cheeks, or you get a facelift, or you get a BBL, all these things are like insanely expensive. They buy cars, right? Um, and so they just blow their money because all of a sudden they can access anything and they think that the money's infinite. Um, so women in this space, like not saving money, there's a lot of young girls who come out of sex work at like 25, um, particularly if they're doing like active, like live, like filmed porn, um, making no money, like having nothing put away because they were just constantly partying every day of the week, buying limos, crazy shit. This may be a personal question, but did okay. you, were you affluent before OnlyFans? Um, no. So were you struggling a little bit? Oh, like money-wise? No, I was not. I was doing well. I actually 
yeah, I was doing well, and I'm really good about saving my money. Mm-hmm. Thank you, um, guys. I've always been that type of person that would have like Russ crawl. Thank you, thank you, Damien. As much as I possibly can. Yeah. Um, and so I think that for me was like OnlyFans. I was like, oh, I'll do this on the side. Like it'll just be extra money. A lot of girls in Scottsdale do it. Like mm-hmm. it's kind of the norm out here in the West. Um, and okay. you know, I come from like the middle of nowhere where that's not a thing. Um, and so I just think since it's so normal, I just basically was like, oh, it's just a side hustle. Yeah. And then it kind of turned in from a side hustle to like, okay, wow, I'm making a lot of money. And God, so I, I think it kind of just become normalized. It has become a lot. I think, I think we think that because we are living in the West, um, but it's not, it's not normal and it, and it shouldn't be normal. I think it is normal. I think it's pretty normal. I think the media kind of The media, the media definitely. I think it's not that normal. Yeah. I think if you talk to a lot of guys out there that are kind of normal and sane, they aren't paying for pornography. They aren't watching pornography. I think that's what a lot of young men are finding like in this day and age are turning toward pornography to this day and age. And they're having trouble going out there and talking to girls in real life because the media, it's so easy to pull up porn or whatever you want to see is right in front of you. So why go talk to a girl? So it's showing a lot of a lot of young kids and like it's sad (laughs) i just think i think it depends on like like she was saying like what you in referring to like porn is normalized like or sex work like what's your definition of sex work do you know what i'm saying because i think think you're thinking like only fans and stuff like well the definition of sex work is selling yourself basically to me it's yeah it's selling a sexual product so it's if anyone gets like aroused off of the product like i said like a victoria's secret magazine could be sex work like it could be Ah, no, I hate this. I hate this. I like, I'm like, I think that this is a really interesting line of like rhetoric. I don't know how much I agree with it. Um, particularly because it like a lot of the like sex work always bad relies on like capitalism always being bad. And I like wholly reject that. But the idea of like anything can be sex work is silly to me because it's like, are we just saying that just Victoria's Secret model shouldn't exist, that fashion shouldn't exist? Because it's okay. it's not, it God. cannot be just anything that sexually arouses people. Because if that's the case, that means whether you intend to or not, you could be doing sex work, right? Because the reality is that like kids just posing for Sears for the Sears catalog in like the random kids clothing could technically be doing sex work. And it's like, do you just want no modeling, no promotion like this, none of the fashion industry, just obliterate it? Come on, that's not realistic. Sex work is pretty specific. It's when you're selling a sexual product, right? You're exchanging explicitly a sexually intentioned product to a person who is buying it for sexual purposes as well. That's what sex work is, which there's a shitload of. One type of eel. It's more art than it is sex work. work. It's like a way of. I like, think literally seeing a go in a vagina. Well, you is have sex to. You work, have to. You have literally to, using a vibrator and that's sex. You have to think about but why like, there's a market. You have to think about why there's a market not, for what you do. No. Sex work? No, it's no, it's art photography. Oh gosh. Okay, and these guys are the opposite dumb. Um, it's just art. Only I'm just being artistic. Art okay. can be sex work. Dot. Okay, it can be artistic sex work, which is based, by the way. I have no problem with artistic sex work. It's more thoughtful, <laughs> but it's still sex work. Right. If you're taking nudes, even tastefully and art, uh, artfully, it's still sex work. Especially if you're selling those pictures on your OnlyFans. If they're, if your photos are posted and price get price kept, and the goal is to be somewhat sexualized, you're doing some level of sex work. Yeah, it's photography. Like, it's not like watch- I'm just sitting here like. But why do you think people are watching? <laughs> but why do you think people are watching it? Only one reason. If you have, if you have a most, if you have a mostly male, male fan, just to be clear, I don't have a problem with sex work. I think Lav's conversation, like the swerf conversation is really interesting because there's something there. There is pernicious elements to sex work, obviously. There are harms to society. And I'm not gonna say like, all sex work is fine and based and we shouldn't have any concerns about it. That's obviously not true about literally any industry. What is important to me is figuring out the harms, right? The cases of like Lav's history, that is tragic. That is a tragic outplay of sex work. And it is common, it is common that young girls who are homeless, are poor, or don't have access to financial supports in any ways, and don't have good parental things, often end up in sex work. That's sad, that's not good. And a lot of them end up regretting it, right? But do you think I have a problem with like, Brittany Simon's form of sex work? No, not at all, right? There's so much more thoughtfulness that goes into her work. Yeah. If they're paying for it, that's on them. Is selling feet pictures sex work? Uh, it can be, definitely. Uh, like if you're selling feet pictures because you're working for an advertiser selling toe jewelry and it's going in like a fashion journal for jewelry, no. What about poor men that can't do sex work? Well, there's a really interesting conversation about poor men who can't do anything, so they end up doing crime. Like selling drugs, like doing petty crime and ending up at gangs. Like the, the sequelae of like poor women and poor men is very different and they create different societal problems, um, which is why the response to them is different. But poor men who can't, who don't have money, often end up gang affiliated or in criminal spaces, very often. 
and that's tragic too. <laughs> yes, true. It's, it's okay, but it, well. the material reality of it being porn does not change. So let me ask you a question. So if you're so against it, I, I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you delete your OnlyFans if you? I've already spoken about this. I was big okay. enough to where my pornography is going to be out there. You can ages. get it taken down very easily. You uh, can't. Yes, you can. One hundred percent, you can. I, you can't. So yes, you can. I was just curious why you can't. can't. I was just curious. I know. Okay, listen. You guys, me. you guys have been doing this for six months too. I also have lawyers that literally tell me, like you just pay for it and it gets taken. I was just curious <laughs> if, if like you're super. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Okay, no, okay, listen. You guys, me. you guys have been doing this for six months too. I also have lawyers that literally. You can't. So yes, you can. Down very easily. You can't. My pornography is going to be out there. You can get it taken down very easily. You can't. Yes, you can. One hundred percent, you can. You can't. Yes, you can. I was just curious why you can't. I was just curious. I know. Okay, listen. You guys, you guys have been doing this for six months too. I also have lawyers that literally tell me, like, you just pay for it and it gets taken. I was just curious. Okay. This like privileged has no like. She probably spoke to lawyers before getting started in this. The idea that you just can. Your lawyers are lying to you. You can take it down in certain ways, and if you have enough money and you're new enough, there are certain ways to scrub it before you're super popular, right? Like if if I anonymously posted a photo of myself, especially before anyone knew about me, and within like a week I deleted it and it didn't get a lot of like upvotes, there's a pretty good chance that it could have been like scrubbed. Like nobody would have saved it from the internet. But there's no way to know. I haven't, I haven't, so I, I wouldn't know. But like, yeah. If, if like you're super, which I think it's really cool actually. Especially like how long Lav has been doing it, was doing it before. There's no way that she can get that all off the internet. No shot. That you're super if Belle Delphine can't, no one can, exactly. Like not into sex. Just erase it off the internet forehead. <laughs> I told you I was gonna hate these girls. Because it sounds like you've like really kind of dipped your toe in the sex work water in different areas, and so mm -hmm. I completely get where you're coming from, and I think it's actually great because I know a lot of people who do the escorting and stuff like that, and I think it's really toxic and actually really scary. There's and, only um, one. But I'm just out of curiosity. Okay. Um, because it sounds like you're super. Thank you. About it, so I was just curious if you have so much passion for it. I would just assume that um, you would want to just completely take off your OnlyFans to not earn money from that to show like you really are super against it. You know? Yeah, I I, I do want to do that. I also think that like I said, I'm coming from a background of uh you know criminality i have uh... gosh i actually think lav is our, like when people are like saying that she's going back and forth with only fans i don't know if she's still actively posting my understanding is she isn't i don't know the answer because the reason why she keeps it up she's kind of in a rock and a hard place though where essentially if she doesn't have the only fans up with the content that already existed she's just basically not making money on content that people will have access to um if she's posting new stuff that would be super hyperbol uh hypocritical which Lav is a little bit notorious for being somewhat hypocritical, so that wouldn't be surprising. Um, but I actually don't know the answer here. Uh, basically ruined my job opportunities from being a public sex worker online. Okay. There are very minimal ways to make money. I haven't posted for months, mm -hmm. and my sex work is going to be that out there. I've been doing sex work for so long that it will just keep getting reposted. It'll keep getting reposted, and I want to move on. I don't want to have to talk to a lawyer every week and say, hey, there's a new uh, picture of me when I was 18 being circulated. Can you take it down? It's on Reddit. And uh, love is more impulsive than hypocritical. Uh, impulsivity can lead to being a hypocrite, right? Because you say that you stand for some value and then impulsively you do something else because it serves you best. Uh, you know, appeals to you most in that moment. That doesn't make you not hypocritical just because it was impulsive. Every fucking Just because there was less intention about it doesn't make it not hypocritical. I just don't think being hypocritical, like, anytime I, like, make these criticisms, I'm not being, like, an internet insane person who's being like and because you're hypocritical you always will be you can never be anything else and you're evil i'm just being like yeah she's hypocritical pretty regularly that's true yes i have criticisms that i do pretty regularly so does destiny so does every other person on the internet because guess what we're all people week i want to be able to move on with my life and hey if you want to look and you want to pay me it's there i'm not going to post on it but there's an archive and at least It'll be sent to that. I don't, and you know, maybe once I get, well, I am in the process of getting an actual job working with women at crisis centers, but um, it, until then, uh, and after then, hopefully all that money will go towards uh, sex worker outreach programs to help those women. Uh, but until then, I'm sort of in a, in a rock and a hard place. I think that a lot of women don't realize what comes after sex work, and um, it's not great. You don't get hired anywhere. Uh, you don't get, uh, everyone has seen you naked. Imagine walking into a room, I've been doing this for six years. Imagine walking into a room with 100 people. They've all seen you naked. I mean, I've, we all I've, have boobs, we all have the same thing. Sure, but there's a very specific way in which men treat women who they've seen as sexual objects, and it's not kindly. So I have very limited options. Right now, I would love to have never I, been from the sex industry. That's part uh, of my... Her faith. This woman, this is the type of woman that when I meet in person, I just want to, like, drop kick. Like, just the little faces. Like, look at the little faces she's making no, while Lav is talking. I, and, language. like, everyone knows, like, Lav and I have a very tense relation. Like, we're by no means friends, okay? At all.
That doesn't mean that I can't, like, watch this and be like, holy f This woman's a bitch. Men treat women who they've seen as sexual objects, and it's not kindly. So, I have very limited options. Right now, I would... The... Okay, this is, this is the white girl mean face, okay? Oh, I remember seeing that. Anytime I see a girl do that towards me, I just, I just want to erupt. I literally just want to scream. It makes me so angry. God. Love to have never made any money from the sex industry. That's Because then they'll gaslight you. And you'll be like, why are you making that face? And I'll be like, what face? And you'll be like, the face you just made. And I'll be like, oh, I can't raise my eyebrows. And you're like, you know what you're doing. We both know what you're doing. And they'll be like, I can't even do it very well. You can tell I don't do this often. Well, <laughs> it's just like, God. F <laughs> Part of my, my whole platform online is that I, I don't believe that this is a, I don't believe that sex work is work. It's not work. And it shouldn't be work. Um, but unfortunately, it's just the cards I was dealt and I'm trying to get myself out of it. So you live and you learn. You live and you learn. Yo, Nick Granger, thank you for the 100 man. Um, rate the girls on personality, not on looks, Brian. Right to left. Well, before we do that, why don't we do this? Does he know them? This one by Stifler. Uh, Stifler, ask the ladies to rate their looks on a scale of one to ten. Oh my gosh. So why don't we what? start? I'm going to be super irritating and disagreeable, but I don't think that encouraging women to value, give themselves a value rating on their looks is conducive with feminism. So I'll have to pass. I'm a complex woman. Word. I get the job done. <laughs> okay, good job. But you can acknowledge that some women are more attractive than others physically. Sure. Sure. You got, if you're going to speak, Sorry. you got to speak I think mic. everybody's beautiful. I don't think she'd be like off of like looks. There are certainly people who are not beautiful. I just don't think that we should <laughs> <Okay>. value. I, <laughs> I just don't think that we should value looks over other things. I think that the real, I mean, the reality of the situation is that people are ugly and people are beautiful. It's just, I hate this movement. Like everyone is beautiful. Everyone is sexy. There are things that you can be like being sexy, being beautiful is so useless. It's so useless. Know, it's pretty happens. useful. Yeah. It's pretty useful. Uh, yeah. Until, it's pretty useful. <laughs> no, for, the, for, for the first half of a woman's life. Sure. It's well, not I mean, very useful. Throughout in your the entire life. Yeah. No. Well, I mean, obviously aging diminishes your attractiveness, but it's better to be an attractive 60 year old than an, an unattractive it does not change your value well, yeah, it doesn't change your value but it uh, okay they're just talking past each other lab lab is lab is like arguing with him about how it's not very useful where it's like of course pretty privilege is useful and technically it's useful through all of the ages even though let's be honest an older woman has incredibly less sexual value than a younger woman uh, for pretty obvious reasons that's why most women are constantly fighting to stave off aging um where she's talking about like moral value does certainly have an impact on how people treat sure, you. Sure, for socialization, yeah. People will treat you differently if you were well, yeah, it doesn't. it doesn't have an impact on... But it doesn't have any real value. Well, I mean, if you can't... But the... I disagree with this. I think being attractive has very known value. Like, it doesn't have moral value, but it obviously has value in, like, privileges that you can have access to, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, what, I think I it mean, does. How do you determine value? what is real value? I mean, if, if you are it can bring value. if you are so physically attractive that you can basically monetize that, to the, for example, for, for models. Well, I'm against for, that. <laughs> well, you're you're. Well, we're not talking necessarily about like nudity here. You're you're against like proper like magazine models, like a oh, chick who's the way advertising that, for the way that women are used as, as opposed to men. as a, as a, yeah as opposed to men as uh, objects in for advertisement. I'm against yeah. But you don't object to do you dis, you don't think that men are used in the same way? No. Perhaps not to the same degree. And I mean, that's reflected in the fact that there's more women. There's a different social zeitgeist money. for women being sexualized than there is for men. Well, I, I reject that, but... It, don't, it doesn't matter if you reject well, it. It's what's happening around you. Perhaps in the context of, for example, if we're speaking specifically about sex work. Oh, man. This is where, like, they're just... They're literally just talking past each other. Like, both of them are kind of right. They're just not... When we're saying value, oh, this is, like, this is my least favorite thing. This is, like, I like. I remember one time I was getting to a disagree with a lot of in a Discord... And she like didn't want to use the word fundamental. And so I said, cool, can we use the word schmoogly boop to mean, and then I just described fundamental. Cause it, it, like, it's really important to like actually figure out the words. Um, and the problem is that like when she's saying value, she's talking about moral value. And when he's saying value, he's talking about like functional value, like things that you can get from it. Um, and sometimes he's talking about moral value. He's like kind of talking about both. Sure. It's everything. There are there are women there are advertisements with for milk with milk all over a woman's face and that's supposed to symbolize ejaculate. There's that doesn't happen with men. That's not that's not could the advert. Could just be milk though. It could just be milk. It could just be milk. There's certainly advertisements. Okay, now Brian's just not being real. Of course, when a girl has fucking milk all over her face for a milk ad, it's it's come on her face. Nobody's being like, oh, silly woman spilling milk all over her face. Toto. Now I want to buy milk. Everyone's being like, yeah. 
right? And it's funny. It's a funny joke because we think it's funny to get cum on people's faces, you know, silly. Uh, but it's not just like, uh oh, silly girl spilt milk. It's like, Everyone knows, like, oh, they're making the milk look like some cum shots. And that's why it's funny, because it's inappropriate, and it's supposed to be for kids, because it's milk. They're just milk, right? I'm not saying that every time a woman is on an advertisement, it's sexualized, but it certainly is more sexualized, and the zeitgeist is very different for women sexually than it is for men. Okay. So, but you, you have an issue, though, with the whole... Objectification of female body, yeah. Well, you have an issue with the rating system. Yes. Because why? Why, why, because, why do you object to the question? Because it, it, you only ask it so that your chat can laugh and decide whether or not these women are actually tens or what they look like, and I object to that. That's you object true. To what part? Why you're asking the question? So you object to? Well, okay. They do this for two reasons. Number one, for clips and and reactions, and number two, because why they're actually asking is to see how much, according to their chat, women are touching grass and like based in reality, right? It's why when you have like. Gorgon the Destroyer, like that one chick who was on a while ago, who's like super obese and very unattractive when she called herself a 10. Everyone's like, okay, this girl's deluded. She's part of the body positivity, blah, blah, blah. It's like, it's to both collect the women into a group to dismiss them um, and to laugh at them, of course. Me asking the question. Yes. Why? Because I don't, I don't think, <laughs> you, bring, you bring these women on to laugh oh. at them and oh. for the chat to laugh at them and Here I object to that. So wait, well, you're strawmanning kind of what I do. It's a not bit. a strawman, baby. That's what you do. You, you're saying I bring women on to what? So that they say something. So you bring on uneducated, unself-aware women. What? I, False. I have a master's degree. I'm not. I'm not okay. <laughs> False. I'm not I have a master's degree in uh, business. Um, I am educated. My lawyers told me that if my if I want to scrub my OnlyFans, uh, it's gone tomorrow, and I believe them. Just, Fake news. Disavow. I'm not saying that every she probably should have called a baby though. Yeah, single woman uh, well. is, but that is the whole model of the show: is that you bring on unself-aware women, you bring on uneducated women. That's not true. So that you can laugh at them, and so that the chat can laugh at them. Didn't you message him it's asking to be on this? Though. Yes. So I could say this. That, that's wow. that's all you wanted to say. Well, I'm Absolutely. sure there's more you have to say. There's well, a I mean, things. I I certainly reject your assertion there. Um, I mean, then what's the way? So she like I would say like there's a couple. I'm not I'm not gonna critique Lav's performance here too much because she's mostly just steamrolling brian um she probably shouldn't have done baby um it was like a slight optical l but her staying like cool as a cucumber so far has been well he's been like kind of stumbling over his words has like given her a really big optic w the objective of the show what's the objective of the yeah show? why there's so many clips going around of uh gorlock the destroyer mm. of Warlock, and why there's so many <laughs> sure. clips of young blonde women saying very dumb things and very little clothing well let's not discount the brunette women who are saying dumb things sure. too but them too so i mean first and like that response of like when he makes a joke she'll like She'll, she'll play ball is really, really good, actually. First off, when it comes to the clips, I would say that, actually, we're not clipping. But you know what's clippable. Huh? You know what's clippable. Oh, I know Listen, exactly I, what's clippable. Wait, but a lot I of these like... people, like, watch the podcast and they clip it on, on, our, on our behalf. So uh, you, you're asserting that I'm... And you still know they're going to do it. Well, you're asserting that I'm making the women look dumb. However, we're not... <laughs> Okay. Not. You have this this measure of plausible deniability in which you can reject that you're doing that, but everyone knows it's what you're doing. True, babe. Well, that's a straw man. That's not a straw man. It's straw man. You, you're saying. <laughs> oh, God, teach red pillar straw if man. The sexual objectification of women is haram. Can we dispense with the status objectification of men? Um. So here's where I would really differ from Lav. I don't think the sexual objectification of women is wrong at all. I don't think sexual objectification is wrong in any way. The problem is when sexual objectification allows to dehumanization, right? And an entitlement toward another individual. We sexually objectify each other all the time, right? Anytime I, for example, like see a cute girl and I'm like, whoop, whoop, I'm sexually objectifying her. I'm not thinking about her complex relationships with her parents or how she subjectively feels about me saying booba. I'm just like looking and appreciating it, right? The problem is if I go up to the girl uninvited and then I walk up to her face and I go, oh, booba. Okay, that's the problem because now I'm imposing myself onto her because I've objectified her and I'm just thrusting myself into her for basically my own gratification, right? But it's not the objectification that was the problem. It was the acting on it and the dehumanization of the lack of consideration about how this other person, it's the lack of subjectification in my interactions with the person. That is the problem. Okay. Words are hard. What's the, the intent, then what's the steel the, man? You're saying the intent of the platform is to bring women on to make them look stupid. The Basically, the premise of the show is bring a group of people- To laugh at the modern woman. Don't interrupt me. Let me actually explain, my, explain what the podcast is about. We bring people on. We bring both men and women on, and we talk about- 
Super even numbers, by the way. Modern dating, and often why modern dating sucks. Mm -hmm. And we have long form conversations lasting anywhere from three to four to five hours. Uh, and you know, oftentimes a lot of these clips, and look, we, we make clips too, and we know, you know, oh, she said something interesting, he said something interesting. So we do clip, but we do, as far as the show goes, we, like I said, have three, four, five hour long form conversations where we get into the nuance of various dating related topics. Sure. I mean, we spent 30 minutes talking about the, you know, your background and how you're against sex work. And, you know, we, we got pretty deep into that. And, and I think I've I've conducted... that you're evil. I don't think that you're doing all of this on purpose. I think that that's a happy accident because well, the clips that go viral. Well, I mean, the issue is Brian is giving a whole bunch of information that doesn't matter for what Lav is saying. The fact that on the four to five hour show, you get the nuance of who they are as an individual to some degree doesn't change the fact that when you ask the question, hey, ladies, write yourself, you're hoping that Gorlock the Destroyer calls herself a 10 so that you can get several thousand dollars worth of super chats posting in just to make fun of her, right? That's what you're hoping for. It doesn't matter that you're getting the nuance and that you know that Gorlock the Destroyer like has a, like a tenuous relationship with her dad and that she like feels that like Donald Trump was like not a very good president. None of that matters because the clips are intent are always going to be objectifying because that's what clips are. There is no context and you're asking that question for the clicks and the donations. You are asking it so your viewers can laugh at them. You know that. He knows that. And it doesn't matter that they do all this other I can spend five hours building rapport with somebody and in two minutes still basically utilize them for content and de like degrade their humanity to some degree um, and ask them a salacious question to get a reaction and to get money. Like, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, like, none of the shit that he's saying matters. You know that. You like it. There's well, only of one course I like clips yeah. go. Yeah, I, I like if clips go viral. Sure, that's that's great. It brings more eyeballs to the show. Sure. But. I even saw that you retweeted a a, a video of someone. You know, of uh, someone. Here, I'll uh, add a limiter some, on it. One of the hosts calling one of the girls a dumb bitch, and then it goes into the meta of the person watching it calling the girl a dumb bitch, and then it goes into the meta of someone watching it calling that a dumb. Bitch. You know what the show does. You know what it is. Wait, what I'll keep it from peaking for you. No, I don't think anybody on the show has any, ever called anyone a dumb. Bitch. Are you sure. talking about the cartoon? Yeah. You're talking about the cartoon. Yes, that is the social perception of the show. Are you talking about freedom? Are you talking about freedom tunes? I saw it on your your Twitter feed. About freedom. Your... There's nothing inherently wrong about Brian asking the question. If Brian said, so here's the problem that's going on between Brian and Lav right now and why Brian looks cringe. If Lav went, you know what you're doing. You're wanting to get money. You want the ugly girls to call themselves a 10 so you can laugh at them. And Brian goes, if Brian did what Myron does and go, yeah. I want to give him a reality check. Absolutely, that's what we're doing. Then it would be fine because then he's just owning what he's doing. The problem is that Brian is pretending to just be like, what? Uh oh, that's not what I'm doing. I'm just bringing on all types of girls and gals to have chitty chats about relationships. And when I ask them questions, it's just neutral. It's not. It's not neutral. And everyone knows that. But the problem is that Brian's trying to pretend like it's something other than it is. That's why Brian looks cringe here, right? Not because he's asking the questions themselves. In my view. Lav probably has an issue with the question overall. Um, I don't have an issue with the question, personally. Freedom Tunes. I saw it on your, your Twitter feed. I'm not sure if I reposted that on my Twitter feed. However, if you're talking about the Freedom Tunes cartoon, it it, which, is not satirical, which is yes. satirical, which was not produced by whatever. So you, you don't think that anyone watches that show, this show for that? For what? Yo, I really Do don't think it's women? that serious. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, Brian invites girls on, ask them No, it is that serious. Laugh fucked up as well. The moment she said uneducated, all these uh, uneducated, unimport, uh, what was it? Uneducated, unintrospective women. They're, they all don't like her now. She She's out of girl club. This is the problem with girl club. You're in until you're not in. And once you're not in girl club, you're out um and they'll constantly make little sly digs and remarks to fucking undercut you and cut your knees out from underneath you so she was in girl club tenuously but then she called them uneducated these two are probably the main leaders of girl club now because they're the most attractive and they're all not gonna like her now uh, she she effed up because um masters of business arts does have a master's degree okay it's only serious Wait, if you what take it serious? that deep yeah you know i don't think it's that deep what, what is that serious I feel like this is just a lighthearted, like, casual, Someone tell me a joke. just talking. Like, them trying to be like, it is yeah. lighthearted, but we can also get real. It's not that serious. Okay. But it also can be analyzed from multiple lenses. Like, it's fine. If Brian want, and her want to go into the conversation, shut up. At the same time, I'm sorry if that's uncomfortable. She's just saying that to be like, can we move on so, like, we can talk more? Like, that's it. She's just like, it's cringe. She just doesn't like that Lav is having the limelight on her. I'm, I'm perfectly it's happy to continue talking. Talk Lav started the insults. Yes. She's out of, this is what I said. She F, she, Lav up here by insulting these girls right if lav wanted to stay more neutral 
and I think probably would have been better is to not throw like these girls under the bus or at least not make these girls feel like they're being thrown under the bus, but throw like other women under the bus or throw yourself under the bus. Throwing your past self under the bus is like the most useful for like staying in girl club while also maintaining like certain like statements that could be perceived as like criticisms about this please go ahead i'm perfectly happy also i think that there are other things I need ibuprofen if I had <laughs> no, so, <laughs> let, let me just address the cartoon thing a satiric so see again she's like doing another attention grab she's like oh i have a, I, I need a headache i have a headache i need some ibuprofen like she's just trying to like pull the attention back to her cool Cringe. cartoonist called freedom tunes made a cartoon lab is also uneducated yeah i agree uh, so she probably should have said things like you bring on a bunch of like sex workers like myself and uneducated women like myself. And then you ask us a bunch of really difficult questions. And most of us don't have any background in debating and philosophy. We haven't really spent much time thinking about our lives and our worlds. We're just like kind of running off the seat of our pants, trying to like survive. Um, and so you like ask us questions that will pin us in a certain direction that you expect us to answer in such a way to get us to make statements to make clips from. Uh, but yeah. Th there's something about, I, I forgot. First off, that wasn't produced by whatever. And that's, it was taking it jabs at us and it was, I mean, it was in good spirit. I thought it was funny. No, oh, I love yes, being called stupid. Whether or not, whether or not you created <laughs> it, right? whether or not you created it, or you made it, or you signed off on it, or you liked it, any of that, sure. the reality is that people watch the show and that's what they get from it, and that's mm. why it was popular. Right? Well, look, um, certainly I would say. See that what they're doing now? Your, Gosh, your, girl, girl spaces are so interesting to me. So, did you see how she's? So she's for sure like one of the leaders now of girl club. So she started snapping her neck as well because all she's communicating to the other girls is she doesn't give a. F what Lav has to say, and the sooner we can move on from Lav, the better. So she's doing that by asking for ibuprofen, stating that she has a headache, cracking her neck, and then after cracking her neck, what does she do? She turns to all of her girlfriends so that they can be like, "Oh my gosh, that's so gross! Her neck cracks so loud." <laughs> that's what's well, going on. Your little, you know, sign thing to be like, "We can't do anything here." Like, what do you, what do you mean? Be, mind, be mindful of, be mindful of, uh, you know, what you're saying online because you're, you're writing, you're giving us just constant attention seeking. I actually didn't expect the amount of attention seeking from her. It's a lot. Like, it's a lot. <laughs> the rights to use this for whatever we want to use it for. I'm not following you there. Can you clarify that what you, you're talking about are talent releases? Yeah. You object to us having people sign talent releases? No, I don't object to that. I'm saying that you- Have you ever been part of a production at any other point Wait, in your life? Wait, hold on. I just answered your question. I said that I don't- I said But, that I don't but why bring, bring up the talent releases? I'm just going to go ahead and take Don't. Now. You just leave it there. <laughs> no, I only brought up the talent releases to, to say that- you More attention seeking. Now turning to the group. So she got slightly rejected by Brian. So now she's turning to the girl group to like reestablish clucking basically you know <laughs> please we don't have to have this that, conversation now what no explain w explain what you mean about the talent releases so with the talent release you are very i mean with or without the talent release you are aware that the internet is forever and that you bring on these women and sometimes you even ask them pointed questions so you sort of get them into a position where they say something stupid and then it gets clipped but also why are you coming on here i know you talked about like wanting to get away from like the sex work and getting away from like like having that like be your i guess mantra or whatever but you're coming on here talking about it on like a really big podcast like i feel like if you were trying to get away from that and you weren't on of anymore then it would make more sense but you're still making money on of be and you're also coming on here saying well i mean she OF. she's a feminist she intentionally came on and I, I knew as much i mean she intentionally came on because she obviously wanted to challenge me which is fine i don't mind it um so to as far as the talent releases go what is your primary <laughs> gripe with the talent releases right it's not the talent release it's your awareness of what happens in the show I think that's, that could happen to you, though. That could happen to so you. What, what, like, what does the talent inside, release inside, have to do inside with Inside everyone, it? there are two wolves. <laughs> well, no one is ever going to clip this part. It's so funny. One of the biggest clips I've seen is this. <laughs> I think that, two wolves? I think that, yeah, two wolves. One. Okay. Yeah, Master Squirrel did get kicked down. She's like, um, but like, who cares, right, Brian? And Brian's like, no, no, it's fine. <laughs> One aspect of the show is that you want to get- Never doubt the powers of a misogynist, okay? Even if you try to appeal to his side, he don't care. F you. Clipped and you want, you know, young girls to come on and make a fool of themselves. Welcome to the internet. Well, as far as getting, getting clips part, I would say welcome to the internet. Yes. Listen, we, stupid- We want to you, be successful. Yes, of course you do. Of course you do. I, I want to be successful. And I'm, and but, you are allowed to have that space. I'm not saying that you should be deplatformed. You are allowed to have the space. And if people want to come on and be stupid and they want to be, you know, shout out their OnlyFans, they can do that also. So now they're all starting to act up. She's putting her head on the microphone. She's like, they're starting to, they're starting to mimic these two girls. I'm also allowed to come on. Julia Sandoval, subscribe. Raven. I'm also allowed to come on and challenge you, right? Sure. Hey, right, right. Right. So there's that aspect. And, a, and, and then there's the second aspect okay. of which you do use this show to say some pretty poignant things. I think that you telling women that they're. It's like, we get it. You're bored and you're not interested in this conversation. Heard. Absolutely heard. Good to go. We've heard you. Clearly, Brian is. And you're here for, on his show. So if he wants to talk about it with Lav, he could talk about it for as long as he would like like sexual selectors and you telling women to. I mean, the, your delivery is a little rocky on some of it. Who here has plastic surgery? 
Like I'm gonna guess since Lav's been in like OnlyFans and sex work and stuff, she is very familiar with Girl Club and probably doesn't care about it. Would be my guess. I could be wrong, but that's my read of Lav. Yeah, uh, what, what you, all the bottles natural. What, let me ask, what do you guys, what do you guys have? Fake, fake boobs? Uh, anything else? Lips? Botox, lip filler, um, and then boob job. Anybody have Same. a BBL? No. Wish. Honestly, BBL? Don't get it. I used to have Botox, but I Lips? Oh, I have Botox. Is I that plastic surgery? Yeah. Kind yes. Of. I have Botox. So my position on plastic surgery is I would prefer a, a girl, for example, all of you, I would think you're more attractive. Let's say, I hope this isn't like, monk, like. No, you're allowed to do this. No. Okay. Tell us how you feel. Careful. HR's would, watching. Yeah, fuck, whatever. Um, I would prefer all of you with however your boobs were before y'all got fake titties. I would find you more attractive like that. Without the fake tits they and without the that. lips, huh? Yeah, I mean, they all that's, that's an that's opinion. Like guy, yeah. no, Everyone is different. I genuinely yeah. like. I genuinely that's prefer. Right, yeah. Like, I can I can back you on this. I think as a guy, yes. look, looking at a girl, you want all natural. Yeah. Maddie is all this is such cope. I fucking hate this from men. Look at you. you. At least red top is beautiful without makeup. You don't know that. She's got a load of plastic surgery on her. So do you like her without makeup plus plastic surgery? What about microblading, which is temporarily tattooing your eyebrows on your face? Because I can tell you a girl this blonde probably has to do that to some degree. D is she still attractive without the microblading and without the plastic surgery? God, it's so cringe when men cope about like, I actually, I actually think natural girls are the most attractive. Then why the is your girlfriend wearing makeup? Why did she dye her hair? Why'd she do all that sh do you think it's ugly on her? Do you hate it? Are you slowly trying to convince her to just never wear makeup and never dye her hair? How natural do we mean? God, it's so annoying. I think that there are lines of natural that, yeah, I understand people being like, yeah, this is too much. And I think it's like, it can be wherever the fuck you want. I don't care. But when guys, like this guy says, I like natural, and his girlfriend has fake lashes on, eyeliner, she's probably done brow stuff because her brows are pretty on point, she's dyed her hair, um, she's got highlighter on her nose, she has blush on, she probably has some lip matte depending on her natural lip color. What do you mean you like natural girls? How natural? Maybe a spray tan, hard to say because she looks uh, she looks mixed race, so she this might be her natural color. Oh no, the, no, she's got a suntan. You can see a tan line right there. So that would be natural, right? And so it's like, I think it's fine. I think it's guy, fine for guys to be like, I actually just prefer women without makeup, which is totally fine. But then if you say that, and then all the women that you pay for on OnlyFans and that you follow on Instagram are constantly caked up with BBLs, I'll believe you. I think you're lying to me, okay? Boys manifest just as much as women. Trust me crazy okay this Over. this male preference argument against plastic surgery makes me want to throw up going under the knife going under the knife to change your physical body to look more fuckable for men don't you have botox? i don't think it has anything to do with <laughs> yes i've gotten botox. 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 So we do it for okay. ourselves yeah. yeah she's saying she got botox because it makes her look more fuckable probably in the lips if she got botox and filler in the lips it's to give her those big sucking lips okay I don't I know where she's going. Men get more... Botox. Getting breasts and getting a BBL is much different than getting Botox. But I also. Okay, I don't know where she got the breasts. I didn't get it for a man. I got it for but a not... God! Uh, I hate this. I'm just getting this breast surgery for myself. N no. No. You're never getting. This, this is. Okay. This is why every guy that talks about how much they hate cosmetic surgery hates it. It's because people just cope about it, where they're like, I'm only getting it for myself and you're like why though and they're like i just like it why do you like it well i think it makes me look prettier why do you think it makes you look prettier well because of society because of what people find attractive in women like big sucking lips and big titties and a big and a tiny waist it's just arbitrary you've just upon your own experience stumbled magically into hourglass lip sucking lip looks just you just happened upon it you were like mm, unrelated to society i've decided that it looks better so i'm just doing it for me i'm not wearing makeup just for me i'm wearing it for other people i think it looks pretty on me i like it it's fun part of it's for me but a large part of it is also because society's told me that eyelashes and eyebrows and color on your cheeks and freckles look cute on me makes me look more attractive I hate this. I hate everyone. Every time I watch the whatever podcast, I'm like, I hate everyone. No one gets plastic surgery you for Botox, themselves. Girl. Yes, every, like, no one gets I, a boob job for themselves. I do That's get it for myself. Do that? To feel confident for yeah. yourself. Yeah, but, uh, to feel confident for yourself. Uh, 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 uh. Why, why don't you feel confident?
What? Like That's feeling confident because, because you feel more f***able. That's it's not you feel uh, I'm a guy and I don't believe this guy that he isn't attracted to plastic surgery. So I do meet a couple of guys who genuinely are not attracted to plastic surgery. Um, just like I've met guys who genuinely, I believe, aren't attracted to makeup and they find it less attractive. I just think most guys are coping about it because it feels better to say it. Uh, why, is that, why is everything, why is everything about yeah. sex? Literally. Why is everything about sex? You're getting breasts? Are you getting, you are, what is everything about sex? Says the sex workers who, by the way, got fake tits for their sex work. Just to be super clear, they got fake tits for sex work, probably. Which is fine, by the way. Adding a sexual organ to your body—how is that about sex? Is that a joke? It's I think you might be body. the joke. Only. We all have breasts. It's part of your body. I'm no. sure you are, but, no. Yes, but you are altering your body in a potentially lethal. We all have breasts. Yeah, there is sexual. Organ. Lower your voice. In a potential. Lower your voice. Whoa, whoa. Thanks. Lower your voice. You are sure. altering your body. God, I I do not like this woman. I do not like love, and I cannot handle this woman. She's just. She is the woman who is constantly undercutting she's the anti-social girl who rises to the top of the girl hierarchy and she maintains her position by just undercutting the other girls around her just enough to make them feel lesser oh hey let them breathe let them breathe wait yo she wants smoke from like everybody this is okay this is good well i think from because i'm against sex-based oppression i think one of the ways that women are oppressed is that they are enslaved in their sexualities and uh, I, I think, think you need to get laid, girl. <laughs> no, I think, like, that's kind of an inappropriate well, thing to say. I think you need to get laid. Well, I mean, so she, so in her, she does have a fiance. I'm engaged. I get laid quite, quite frequently. More, or the beta's not cutting it for you or something. I think you, well, okay. Oh, I told you. I, what did I, I, God, I know Girl Club so well. Holy shit, was I ever right. I, I am right about her. She's the anti-social girl who the more she doesn't get the attention, the more frustrated it is. Because at this point, she hates Lav because she insulted her and Lav is getting most of the attention, right? The super chats are, keep talking about Begavera. They keep talking about her marrying her and she's vying for attention here. And she's just got to keep upping the ante with Lav because the issue is Lav has mostly ignored a lot of it. In fairness, Lav started this by making the first punch and then she's just ignored her. And now, now we're just getting these escalating digs god this is like actual high school energy right now my self what uh back when i was like what 15 so god too many years ago more than 10 years ago would have been so intimidated by this and i would have been so sad and so insecure uh whereas now i just look at this and it's just like girl <laughs> chill your pants we get it <laughs> see this is this is uh this is coming from a very strange position of deep internalized misogyny what is that uh what is oh love no oh sorry no idea. the the the, the utterance that i need because of my behavior because of my disagreeableness i need to get laid just like just call me it just call me a bitch, i guess just use okay, a gender okay slay and i'm allowed to be just like, just like I'm allowed to be all bitches. Stand up like a normal person and show me off. But can, can I ask you a question? It. Why? So you're, you're kind of coming for her a little bit. Are you guys, have you guys been upset uh, honestly, about the OnlyFans I'm stuff? annoyed in this whole like conversation. Yes. <laughs> not to be rude. I think that she's just very opinionated. I, not to be rude, but like, oh my God, she's so annoying. But like, uh, no offense though. Like no offense intended at all. But um, I think she's like a little rude. Slightly. And Guys, some of it nice hits. to big with her, right? I, I, mean, I mean, nice. <laughs> that, I think that she's that just very opinionated, <laughs> and she's allowed to be. Some of it hits us directly, and that and we're responding how we feel. Did you guys want to? Can you guys reconcile? Listen, did the I twerk will... help? Did her twerking on you? Did it help? Listen, or did it make things worse? Deal. <laughs> um, no, I was think that if someone would have t told me these things, I was so stoked when I was 19 and I was in sex work. Anyone? Be honest. Have you ever been the leader of a girls' club, like no. the girl in red? So. Not all girls clubs are like this, okay? This is just a very unique type of girl club that I hate. I've never been this type of girl, like, no. Content idea, real female nature series. First episode can be over girl club. This would be funny and educational as hell. Yeah, you guys missed the twerking. You'll have to go back on your own to go watch the girls twerk. Uh, no, I've never been, no, never. Um, I've been, I've been leader in girl club, but I, because here's the thing, girl club can be led in a million different ways. Um, this is just the archetype I've talked about of like the anti-social bully girl who rises to the top and she keeps the others in line by making like undercutting comments. Like I imagine that if these girls started like having slightly different opinions, she'd start by giving them like little looks and little like behaviors to kind of 
bring them back in line. Um, I've never been this type at all. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a piece of guys. I'm actually a pretty nice person. I'm pretty considerate. When I was the leader of girl club, I was like a little bit emotionally shut down. So I like maybe wasn't as warm as I could be, but I was never mean. I was never undercutting. Um, I mostly was like oriented. My whole goal in life when I'm in group settings is to make sure everyone's having as much fun. I'm more often when I'm in like the girl club role, I'm more like the bomb role. Um, I just want everyone to have like lots of fun and be safe. So yeah telling me that I was ruining my life or doing something negative for society, I would have had the exact same reaction. I don't blame any of you for having this reaction against me, but I would hope in time uh, you would probably realize that during this I was trying to help women uh, and keep them from becoming me. <laughs>